The development of the midget submarine by the Germans is another chapter in the story of sneak craft attack. First in point of time was Mork, an all-electric one-man midget. She filled the essential requirement of ease and handling by truck to the point of launching and by truck or crane into the water. Mork was not very successful. Her range was a mere 75 miles and she was slow and cumbersome on the surface. Her batteries, which filled the whole forward part of the craft, could drive her at up to four knots. But the swells and anything but the calmest seas battered her oversized hydroplanes unmercifully. Yet she had her good points underwater. These same hydroplanes gave the operator excellent control of his craft, and she submerged and surfaced with fair success. Under actual operating conditions, she failed to measure up, and after two 15-boat sorties in which all craft were lost, she was abandoned. Her successor was the streamlined Bieber, which sacrificed strength for speed. A gas engine was added for surface cruising and recharging the batteries, but her normal range was still restricted to approximately 75 miles. The concavities in the hull permitted the torpedoes to be carried outboard without greatly increasing the bulk of the craft. But they in turn weakened the hull to a considerable degree. Bieber, with her 30-foot overall length and six tons weight, was still small enough to be launched and maintained at quickly constructed strategic points. In her trials, she proved faster and more maneuverable than Mulk but she was also tricky to handle, hard to navigate, and afforded only restricted visibility to the operator. After Mulk was abandoned, Bieber was used constantly against shipping to the port of Antwerp. She had small success and suffered heavy losses. In 15 sorties, using 163 Biebers, 53 of them, almost a third, failed to return. Bieber was being used as a stopgap until the new midget sub, Zehunt, was ready. Zehunt came into action in December of 44. The German engineers had at last found a small submersible that overcame the annoying limitations of the other craft. Zehunt had the great virtue of being mass produced. She was in essence a trimmed down model of a full size submarine and incorporated many of the best features of the British X-Craft, which carried out the raid against the Tirpitz in her Norwegian fjord the previous year. Her propeller was fitted with the Korth nozzle-type rudder, similar to that of full-size German submarines. The glass observer's dome on the hatch cover safely withstood water pressure to depths of 150 feet. Her diesel drove her at eight knots on the surface, and she handled admirably. Here at last was the best midget submarine German engineering skill could produce. The captain called the orders to the engineer who handled all the controls. He kept her smoothly at periscope depth while he was coached into the target. He made ready for firing and diving. He fired the torpedoes at command and the fish slipped off the track on its run to the target. Take her down. And down they went as the captain took a last quick look through the periscope. Underwater, her small size made it almost impossible for the warships to find her. Listening gear was incapable of detecting her propeller noise at slow speed, and it was very difficult to ping on her small hull. About 70% of the Zehunts made attacks on Allied shipping before the war ended, though in many cases the crews missed their targets through lack of experience. Through the periscope, they swept the sky for aircraft before surfacing to recharge batteries and for a breath of fresh air. The morale-breaking loneliness of the one-man craft was gone. Zehunt, with her crew of two, could cruise almost 500 miles and stay at sea for a week. But Zehunt came too late, and the German defeat 
prevented her from proving to the skeptical allies that here was a weapon to be reckoned with.